Hey guys, welcome back to the Dermacom channel. I'm here painting up some Infinity Terrain that we're going to be using for uh, a tournament that starts in a couple hours. Uh, just so you guys know, I end up using Apple Barrel Paints. I find it to be a really good consistency. You can water it down a little bit if you want, but in this case, for instance, um, I want the terrain to dry pretty quickly, so I probably won't water it down. <coughs> Either way, it's fine. When painting up terrain, I typically don't use more than one or two colors. These you can buy. I, I wait to get coupons to buy it on sale at, at my local ho you know, painting hobby store. Um, and generally speaking, you can walk away with this much paint for you know two dollars or less or thereabouts. Um, so when I'm building up some terrain. I decided to try something new this time and I didn't want to do a full-blown turbo terrain on it but I just literally went with some two inch polystyrene took my miter saw to it cut out a bunch of shapes and taking a glue gun to it gluing up the pieces and then applying a layer of paint and this is how we get uh, pieces of terrain that looks like this I don't know if you guys can see it but it has a bit of a lip for some cover um, we actually introduce some ramps to come up to here uh, we'll probably end up putting a, a ladder on this side and uh, this big slice right here um, I like adding uh, stuff beyond painting because I do an okay job for for painting up some terrain but you know there, there's definitely some bonuses to using a nice uh, color inkjet printer or whatnot uh, so I'm gonna add some embellishments to it um, take this infinity sign for instance and just drop it right here uh, after it's painted and dried and uh, so let's just go ahead and get to it uh, the paint brushes I use typically you can go to again Michael's Hobby Lobby any of these kinds of stores and find uh, a huge set of paint brushes including multiple of these sponge brushes and pay a dollar fifty dollar uh, seventy five I'll use the larger brushes just to apply the base coat where I don't really care as much about trying to avoid streaking from the paint brushes and then I come back with the sponge brush to apply some texture but at the same time to also remove the uh, streakiness of that sometimes the cheaper paint brushes um, apply on terrain and and I don't go out and spend you know fifty dollars on one paintbrush like I said I get about, I don't know, 30 or 40 paint brushes here for two bucks. They're, they're cheap and generally speaking they're not gonna they're not gonna last you. Um, every once in a while I'll be able to recover one and keep going but uh, for the most part these are used once and then you, you pitch them. Um, I just don't do enough train work to warrant getting really expensive paint brushes. So here we have our piece of terrain. Um, unfortunately, since I put this side facing outward, this side should have been on the inside. I'm gonna have to probably apply a little more paint here than I'd like because I want it to dry pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and get some paint out. I typically start with a lighter color and add, um, when I get to the sponge brush, I'll end up adding black to this mixture. Um, and polystyrene drinks the paint. So because of that, you definitely want to make sure um, that as you are painting, you kind of keep that in mind and be a little bit liberal with the amount of paint that you use. The other interesting thing is that as you're painting polystyrene, the sides that you cut, which will be more porous than the, the, the facing sides of the polystyrene, will drink the paint more and require longer times to dry and all I can suggest is again because I'm trying to get this painted up pretty quickly is to accept during the initial painting that it's going to take a lot of paint but when you come back and you're doing kind of your stippling to uh, just be a little bit lighter with the amount of paint you're using How you guys been? It's been a long time since I've done a painting video where I actually sat down and talked with you guys. 
a uh, lot of stuff coming up with Infinity. Um, probably by the time this video gets released, I've got a couple in the other Infinity videos that will be released. For those of you guys who are interested in doing collaboration videos with a bunch of people, uh, we definitely, you know, open policy uh, for coming on out to the YouTube Wargaming Facebook group. We call it FaceTube Wargaming when we do collaboration videos because, um, but we didn't figure people would know what that was when they went out to Facebook. So on Facebook, we're just YouTube Wargaming. Uh, we have a couple of admins, so um, I can't figure out through Facebook how to just let people come into the group without a accepting their invite. So, but we're pretty good. It's usually no more than an hour or two. I mean, if you guys are coming in from Australia, I apologize. We might not be awake, but um, definitely within a day, someone on the because anyone in the group can accept the invite, and we encourage people to to add their um, add their YouTube videos out there, just because it's a it's another way for people to get and find your videos. So, I totally encourage everyone, especially if they're doing any kind of work with regards to uh, wargaming, and that can grow to include, you know, role-playing games and that kinds of things, uh, just drop your videos in there. Let people know about them. Some things about doing a collaboration video. Um, generally speaking, I've been the one who has organized them, but anyone in the group can say, hey, I want to do a, a week's worth of videos regarding, you know, um, missions, you know, or battle reports or whatever. And uh, you just kind of put a call out to see if people are interested. And sometimes, sometimes it doesn't always work out. But, um, Thus far, we're, we're two for three. We had three collaborations that we wanted to do, and two. this is the second one uh, that's been successful. Generally speaking, if I do a collaboration series, I'm going to ask you to have your videos done up to a week in advance of when we're actually doing the release of the videos on YouTube. And uh, you'll notice... On these sides, even though it's got that ink, I'm not going super heavy with the paint uh, because, again, I'll be going back through using stippling. So, um, and by stippling, it's just using the the sponge brush to kind of give it some texture, and the, whatever pops through will just be added to the uh, whatever pops through will just be added to the texture look of the terrain. As I've continued to make terrain and paint terrain, I've been finding that sometimes the best things that can happen is a mistake. Because <laughs> then you're just like, ooh, that's something else we could do. And I encourage you that if you do make a mistake with terrain, push through it. Because uh, a lot of times, like I said, I'll be making terrain and accidentally do something and it comes out better than what I was hoping for. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a speed up at this point so uh, you don't have to necessarily watch me do all of this. Okay, what we're trying to do here is apply a nice layer of paint onto the polystyrene. Polystyrene is very porous. It tends to drink in the paint quite a great deal. So if you were to start painting something nice onto terrain right away, the likelihood is that it will not come out the way you want it to because... Uh, the paint will be absorbed at different rates across the polystyrene. So we apply a, this layer of gray paint just to make sure that as we continue to add uh, kind of a marbling effect later on that once, we, once it's been applied, it'll look that way after it's dried. Polystyrene tends to take a little bit to dry, so 
while we're waiting for this one to dry and we put a little placard to sit it on. I should have used a drop cloth, but um, we're going to go ahead and start finishing the assembly of some of these other pieces uh, so that we can kind of bust through the painting on multiple pieces of terrain all at once. So I'm not quite sure if the video is sharp enough to reveal this, but the amount of gray paint that has seeped into the polystyrene has dried it at varying levels, but this is the point at which we can start applying the darker paints to the terrain in order to create a marbling effect, and literally we have a pool of black paint, a pool of light gray paint, and those are the only two colors that we use as uh, with the sponge brush to create this marbling kind of effect. If the if the area becomes too one color, like if, if the paint starts blending together, let it dry just a little bit longer, then apply either the light or the black to, again, give it kind of a, a camo pattern or marbling kind of effect. And if it's too dark, add more light gray. If it's too light, add more black. And literally, that's all you have to do. Terrain painting... Uh, of this nature is not an exact science, but we definitely want to create areas that will highlight embellishments that we're printing off the printer, and for those, we're making them a flat black.